Good morning. Good morning. It is Tuesday. It is Tuesday, March 17th. 16th. 16th. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad Rob is here this morning. Today is Tuesday, March 16th, 2021. And there I am. So we are so glad that you are joining us here this morning. And so today I have with me uh, Rob Hamilton, who's one of the guys that hangs out at our church, one of our members. And I'm so glad that he is joining us this morning. So as you are all coming in, I'm just going to, we're going to say hi. And uh, we're hoping that, uh, well, Rob, it's interesting. I'm just thinking about this whole idea of celebrating a year of COVID. Year, yes, it's been a so longest uh, March break ever. Yes, yes. Um, so what's interesting is you can hear me, but I can't hear you because my Facebook feed is on. So this is going to be interesting. <laughs> I'm going to have to language. figure out how to do this, right? So as I, as I watch people uh, come on, I will uh, say welcome to everyone. And uh, so this morning, uh, good morning, Diane, and good morning, um, Lynn, and good morning, Leanne, and Paul and Sue and Susanna. We're so glad that you've joined us. And uh, I'm not really sure why uh, I can't hear you this morning, but oh, can, I know why. Oh. I know why, because I clicked on it. That's why. And so I'm going to have to just mute that. And now I think I can unmute you. There we go. You can hear That's... me now? <laughs> I realized what I did. It's all a learning process, uh, which I have. One, that's one of the things that I've learned this week or this year in the year of COVID is, is how to extend myself a wee bit of grace uh, because God extends us way more grace than we could ever imagine. So why do we find it so hard to extend ourselves grace? So, especially when it comes to technology. So uh, we are working through the book of Luke during the season of Lent. And I've asked uh, various friends from the congregation to share with us on Tuesday mornings, uh, what stood out to them from the passage. So this morning in particular, we are in Luke 15, uh, which is just a great chapter that talks about God's love. So uh, Rob, I'm going to hand it over to you. And the question is, what stood out to you from this passage? Yeah, first, yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all those be watching whenever. <laughs> and uh, so what stood out? So yeah, Luke 15 is a very deep chapter with three parables and the one I kind of want to speak on today is the parable of the lost coin and the reason is that we're doing some kitchen renos uh, and a few months or back in January we were pulling up tile in our kitchen and we actually found a penny underneath the tile and it was year on it's 1990 which is, would probably be the year they built the uh or put the floor down in the kitchen wow if you hold on to that that might be worth something someday since we don't do pennies anymore i know and it's funny we're, we need to find like a 2021 penny to put underneath the new floor this weekend and one of the contractors we had in said well just get a face mask and put in the drywall and they'll know exactly what year it uh <laughs> that rental was done <laughs> that's good that's good but, but we picked the parable of the lost coin because I think we can all relate that uh, we've all lost something during our life. Like you've always like, where are my keys or whatever? Uh, I know just before Christmas, I went to Christmas shopping and uh, I got some gifts. I, was, I, was, I had a schedule and I was knocking the door. Some gifts came delivering the door and uh, I thought they were Christmas presents to be saved for later. So I put them away in a good hiding spot. Later on, I find out that, uh, no, that one gift was not meant to be a Christmas gift. It was meant to be, uh, I want to use it now. Oh my. Uh, 
Oh, that's bad. Yeah, it wasn't good. Uh, so Friday night, I was like, okay, I'll find it. I have a spreadsheet of where I put stuff and all that. And uh, I couldn't find it <laughs> all day, Saturday, all day, Sunday. I searched the entire house where I would have, where I may have put it. I could not find it. Uh, Monday morning, okay, I'll search this one place one more time. And I found it and there was great rejoicing in the house. I messaged all the girls and the family. I found it. And uh, yeah, they said, oh, great, where'd you find it? I said, I can't tell you because it's a good hiding spot. <laughs> so so kind of like, it, it was good. Uh, so how about we, we'll, we'll read uh, the parable of the lost coin. And uh, so maybe we'll just uh, pray that Lord, just help uh, as we get into your word, just help us understand and Pray your Holy Spirit as we go through your word. Amen. Amen. All right. So Luke 15, verses 8 to 10. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, for I found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there was a joy rejoicing in the presence of angels of God over one sinner who repents. Mm -hmm. So it's only three verses, but they're 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 pretty deep. They are pretty deep. I'm like, wow! And it's it is like there's three parables here: one of the lost sheep, one of the lost coin. And one of the lost sons. So, what is it about this parable that stood out to you? One, but the the lost coin, because the back in those days, like uh, I was kind of researching this, like coins have their value. Like this woman, she lost a coin that would be a significant amount of money for her back back that back in that time, and. Uh, I remember seeing a, a video presentation uh, online. You guys might have seen it where the presenter is uh, up in front of a crowd and he holds up a new, brand new $20 bill. I have a silver dollar, silver dollar coin instead. Uh, so he holds it up to the audience and uh, said, who wants this $20 bill? And everyone puts their hand up. It's a nice new crisp dollar, $20 bill. And the presenter will uh, crumple it up and uh, say, right, who wants it now? And everyone still has, has their hand up. And the presenter then puts on the stage and he steps on it, tramples all over it, says, all right, who wants it now? And everyone still hand, has their hand up because it's, he puts it in the trash and the, rolls it in the mud and uh, just even rips it up. He said, who wants this $20 bill now? And still, everyone has their hand up. Why? Because that $20 bill is still has a legal tender value of $20. It's still worth $20. Mm -hmm. That is until the government makes it not legal tender. But then let, let's transfer that from the world economy to the God economy. So in our lives like we've we've been crumpled up we've been stepped on dragged through the mud uh put in the trash forgotten about left alone we just got that feeling of we're not worth anything to anyone here but that is not what our uh kirk our creator sees in us uh we are valuable to uh our creator so valuable that he would uh, actually leave uh, the 99 to go find that one sheep. Like it just kind of blows my mind, like blows my mind that uh, we are so valued that he would uh, send his son to live with us, with us sinners, like the people that have been crumpled up and trampled on and stepped on and 
dragged through the mud and forgotten worth. And he would sit with us at our, our table with us and say, you are valued to me. You are, you are more than what the world says you are. Like we are so valuable that uh, he sent his son to die on a cross for us so that we could still have that relationship. We can be with him in eternity. And uh, what I liked about this as well is, especially in verse 10, it says, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of angels of God over one sinner who repents. Like, what would that look like? What would God rejoicing look like? That's a great question rejoicing i'm gonna guess that there might be some dancing and some hand waving maybe even some clapping i know it just just blows my mind like what yeah it, it just I, I have no idea that'd be one i like to i, I would like to see that uh, how would that like that'd be some it'd be a huge party yeah. and who wouldn't want to be there and the other at the start of that verse it's like she lights a lamp. So you use a lamp to, to see in the dark, right? Yeah. And so if Jesus was a lamp, and if we were followers of Jesus, we are supposed to be the light and find these, these people and say, you, know what? you you are valued. You are so valued. And uh, yeah, you know, it, I don't know. I think there's, especially this past year i think there's people out there that with all the quarantine and shutdown like yeah no one cares and that but no it, you are so valued by the creator that he sent his son jesus to to take one for us so we can have a relationship with him yeah i love that i just i love that idea that it doesn't matter how beat up ripped up how dirty how stepped on how alone how isolated we may be feeling our feelings do not dictate our worth what what dictates exactly. our worth is that we have been made in the image of god and i just read this morning that he wants everybody to come to know him and and that's like you nailed it she lit a lamp so he lit a lamp right he like Jesus, the light of the world came into the world to let everybody know, right? To shine the light that right. says, hey, I love you. I love you and I value you and I want to be with you and I'll do absolutely anything, which he did die on the cross for our sins. And sometimes I know I confess, I forget the fact of how much God loves me. And I think especially being in isolation and quarantine, we can forget how much God loves us. And that's something we need to remember today that he gave up everything to come and be with us and to renew that relationship with God between us and, and God. So, and there is much rejoicing. This is a good word, yeah. Rob. Thank no, you. It is, it's, it's God's good word. <laughs> All right. Would you, would you pray for us this morning? Oh, for sure. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we, we thank you for today, and uh, we thank you that uh, that you, you came down, that you have value in us, that we are a part of your plan. And uh, Lord, we just pray that we're able to be the light and, and find these lost coins for you. And Lord, we just pray you be with us as we go on our, about our day. And we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Such a great word. You are valued. You are loved and almighty. I love that idea. And just the fact of, like you said, when you found that the one gift that wasn't a gift, there was much rejoicing. And how much more does God rejoice over us? So let's hold on to, to that truth in our spirit today. So thank you so much. Rob, for joining us. And, Thanks for inviting uh, me. <laughs> glad you said yes. <laughs> all right, my dear friends, that's it. That's all. Make sure to like and share. And more importantly, 
share the truth today with someone to let them know that God loves them. Like he loves them. And uh, may you be encouraged in your spirit today that God loves you. All right. That's it. That's all. Have a great day. Bye.